Ryan here. Hope you guys are doing great. So here I am in conversation with an awesome guitarist, Chris Johnson from the band. <laughs> He's looking around from the band Fallen Mafia. They are a hard hitting five piece, heavy band, heavy rock band, I should say. Oh, can I say heavy rock or heavy metal band? Will I get the wrong? <laughs> and oh, I've got to say, man, they have, a, they, they have a very unique sound. I was just listening to, uh, man, your new single, Stars, uh, the latest single, to be honest, for uh, that's been released in December 2020. It sounds cool. It's got like this good melodic guitar stuff that's going on. So more about that, you know, during the chat. So if you are into such videos, would really appreciate you guys if you could hit that subscribe button would help me out and uh so let's dive right in hitting that button <laughs> so let's dive right in man i gotta say thanks for having this chat with me i really appreciate it and uh before we dive right in tell us a bit about who is chris johnson let's get that rolling first <laughs> wow okay yeah so i'm the guitarist from fallen mafia um been playing guitar for oh 20 years maybe like something like that um but yeah short and sweet short <laughs> and sweet <laughs> so how did it all begin you know the start of uh guitars so were you always into guitars right from the start or were you into uh you know singing no. or drums or whatever we started off started off on piano when I was growing up. Um, so I think it's me and my brother. We got we both got piano last lessons when we were about six to six years old, something like that. Yeah, and never really enjoyed it. <laughs> Gotta say <laughs> it was one of those things that felt quite forced and stuff like that. But um, yeah, so started off on the piano. Um, my brother wanted to go off and play guitar. And, uh, and and was told, no, you've got to stick with the piano. So he went and, and made a guitar. And, and uh, I mean, it, it was not a guitar. It was just a, a lump of wood that was shaped like a guitar. But it, it was enough to get some inspiration and, and, and some, some buy-in from parents and stuff like that. So they bought him a guitar. And then, uh, yeah, then, then it was my turn next. I think he got it one for Christmas and I was one for the birthday. Yeah, cool. Start from there, yeah. Cool. So, can you remember, apart from uh, you know making your own, can you remember your first ever guitar that you purchased? Yes, it was a a black Squire Strat. Cool. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it do you was... still have it though? No, no, I don't. I have no idea where it went. No idea. Awesome. Um, been through plenty of other guitars since then so yeah yeah so what are you using right now is it like your new build one or you... oh, oh <laughs> so i'm using i mean the mainstay guitar is the dean the dean cool. receiver yeah cool yeah, man pickups custom decal on it but so who does all that custom work Your, yourself no so this this was all done by uh, a good friend of mine dave allison who yeah, is cool. got a company called label me this all right um an urban promo uh excuse the dust that's not dust that's talcum powder <laughs> <laughs> gig of the weekend uh but no he just he was playing about with some vinyl and stuff like that and just said yeah you want to have a go on the guitar and uh, so yeah he's done all that cool and is that the main guitar that you use for, you know, tracking and all live and everything? So far, yeah. But there's a new kid on the block. I've heard about this on social media, man. <laughs> oh, this one. Wow. <laughs> one, that I, one that I made myself. Cool. Correction, I, I pieced it together. So I bought a Harley Benton to start off with. Yeah, and really strip down everything apart from the body. Yeah. So the the only original item is is the body. Cool. Um, strip it all back down to the bare wood, and then I stained it, buffed it up a bit, made it look a bit sort of battered and stuff like that. Oh, cool, man. So but how long did that take uh, you to you know to do that staining and all that stuff? Is it is it complicated or not? It's, no, it's not complicated. It's uh, to sand it down. It took me about a day to sand it down. All right. Um, I had to sand it twice because I thought I could get over, uh, get get past the advice to work your way down 
the grit of the sandpaper to remove any of the little scratches yeah. and imperfections. But I thought, no, it's all cool, it's all fine, I don't need to do that. Cool. And uh, until I put the stain on, and then it all brought up all of the scratches and just looked absolutely horrendous, so it yeah. resanded it all. <laughs> but um, this the staining, it went on about, ooh, about six or seven coats. Yeah. Over the space of about a week. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah. So is that water-based or spirit-based? Yeah, gonna... yeah, water-based. Water all right, based. cool. So it, uh, it'll probably come off quite easily, but I'll just need to... Yeah. Put some more on it. Yeah, put some more oil, finish up it, help seal it. <laughs> Do you think they will come off if you, you know when you're live and you're sweating? <laughs> it sounds like yes, a little. Well, it started, it started to rub <laughs> off here. Yeah. You can wow. See where it's, it's rubbing off that's like a that's like a naturally road worn kind of feel. <laughs> yeah. It's only had three gigs. Yeah. <laughs> so what pickups uh, are on those, man? These ones, ghost pickups. Oh, cool. So these are custom made from a uh, guy called Wilf, uh, Wilf the Senga, who has got ghost pickups up in Whitley Bay over in the Northeast. Okay. Um, so basically, he just listened to the sound, worked with him um, over a couple of messages and stuff like that to talk yeah. about what, what I was looking for, what I wasn't looking for and stuff like that. Yeah. And he came up and, and made these and they are absolutely amazing. Yeah, so is that done online while you're sharing or chatting or on Zoom or something like that, discussing Yeah, just, how... just, chatting, just yeah. chatting over the phone, over the okay. phone. It just, um, I gave him the original specs of what I was after and then yeah. uh, we had a call and it was just talking through some of his ideas and, and some of the stuff that he was picking out from the songs and from the recording and, and saying, is this the kind of thing that you're after? And Yeah. And, um, yeah. Did he it's nail really it cool. the first time that you received the pickup? Did you have to send it back for any, you know? Do you know it's perfect? First time it was perfect. Cool. There's a stain on it. Just it's just endless. You get, yeah. you get the right spot. Yeah. It's just it's the sweet spot. It just never goes. Cool. Lovely so that thing. that could end up being your main guitar, you know, for future projects yes, and things. So. Potentially, potentially, I'm gonna get some uh, another set of pickups made up for the uh, for the Dean and swap out the uh, the EMGs for the for those ones. Yeah. Um, and I will see which ones. I love I love the neck on the Dean. It's just yeah. so fast and just so responsive. Cool. Um, whereas the the new guitar, the Tele Ship, it's just a bit of a thicker neck and it's more like a uh, more like a Les Paul kind of feel to it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's cool. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, plus you had the Dean for a while, man, so it's kind of got used to your playing yeah. as well, isn't it? <laughs> exactly, and, and uh, sort of diving about all over the stage with it and, and yeah. not knocking anybody out and stuff like that. <laughs> Have you broken a guitar but, yet? <laughs> Did you break one ever at a no, gig? No, no, not yet. I've, I've, I've chipped stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, the Dean, the back of the Dean. Oh, yeah. The stage well. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's just a chunk missing that. Yeah. But uh, cool, no, I've not broken one yet. Yeah. So one. what gauge of strings and what brands are you using, man? Uh I'm using uh NG oh dear me. <laughs> Do you know what? Dario NYXL. NYXLs, yeah. Cool. Uh and it's ten to fifty twos that I use. Cool. Same as me, man. Tens. Yeah. That's what we do. Nice. So, uh, what amps are you using? Uh, are you old school using amps? Are you doing, oh, cool, and not <laughs> modelers or anything? <laughs> no, it's all through the Hughes and Kepa, the uh, Tube Meister 36. Yeah. It's absolutely beast of a little amp. Yeah. Just amazing. Really, really is cool. that what so we hear on the album? Uh, is that the amp that yes. we hear? Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. That is it's, awesome. Um, just such a versatile little 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 lamp. It's only thirty six watts, but I've never needed to move the volume past eleven o'clock. Yeah, anything like that. Any yeah. any sort of gigs, venues, outdoor stuff. It just the power it kicks out is just unbelievable. Yeah. So do you take cabs as well when you when you're gigging? Yeah, I didn't used to, um, because I used to use a four B twelve. That that was quite a it's quite hard work lifting up and down stairs and yeah. getting into the vans and stuff like that. Um, but I've downgraded, I've downsized, and I'm now using a Harley Benton uh, right. 2B12, 
Okay. Which is loaded with the Celestian vintage sturdies. Cool. And uh, yeah. I take that everywhere now. Yeah. Just because it's so easy just to carry about one arm sort of job in that kind of stuff. Yeah. Awesome. And so what is your pedal board like? Is it massive or is it, you know, one of those little things? <laughs> no, not really. It's a bit broken. Uh, it's had a, uh, a battering at the gig. It fell off the stage on uh, on Saturday night. Friday night, sorry. Uh, yeah. There's a few bits and bobs, but yeah, nothing too complex. Wild pedal, um, noise gate. There's a chorus. We've got an EQ pedal, digital delay, pre on booster, up switch, and the uh, the big dots tuning pedal. Cool. So is there a, a, a pedal that you can't live without on that board? right now yeah it's the chorus it's the uh the, the chorus is just unbelievable yeah really really cool i used to have a uh a jojo chorus pedal yeah and uh and um yeah that broke that broke quite badly yeah i tried to fix it and it ended up being <laughs> just a pile of bits <laughs> Cool, man. So do you track when you're recording or tracking for, you know, especially for the singles or album or whatever, do you use your pedal board or is it all going going DI or what is the whole setup? Or do you have the same setup that you do for a live gig, take it into the studio? Is that the kind of thing you do? Bit of both. So do a full setup where it's mic through the amp and then the amp's recorded. Yeah. But it's also being recorded DI at the same time. Yeah. So that it's um it, it's feeding through the dual signal. Yeah. And um and it's bringing out two channels. One that's a, a sort of good old fashioned microphone against a uh, speaker recording in a room. Yeah. And the other one's just got straight a digital signal. Yeah. Cool. Which man. Just adds, adds so much depth to it and versatility because you can get so many different sounds yeah. digitally. Cool. So when you are, let's stick on to the, the uh, latest single star. So how, how many layers would you say, uh, you know, do you layer the rhythm parts like quad, <laughs> like four tracks, you know, yeah, yeah. Or, or two on each side? How does it, how does the whole process work in the guitar world for Fallen Mafia? So it's two on each side. Um, yeah. So there is a, there is my, my tracks, which I double up. Um, yeah. and there will also be Steven's track, which you'll put over the top of it. Yeah. So we can get up to eight tracks, eight layers yeah. on, on the rhythm section, um, just depending on the song. So with, yeah. with stars, because it's very melodic and the verses yeah. and the chorus, each, uh, each guitar was tracked four times cool. was, was on, was on each side. Yeah. So how does the writing process start, man? Is it, it is, does it come, uh, can I say you're the main dude who writes all the stuff or comes up with the f initial idea for the band and then you take it over to rehearsals and it, you know, gets bigger. How does it work? Uh, it, it depends. I mean, stars, that was one of Steven's songs. So, uh, he came up with the basic, the basic sort of bones of it. Um, and, and brought that to rehearsal. We then started building into it and then putting the, the, the structure together and that kind of stuff. Um, and then it's a case of putting the, the, the vocal melodies and the lyrics over the top of it. Yeah. So but if it you... just depends. I mean, there's, there's a few things that I've written recently that, that was starting to bring into the set and there's a few things that Stephen's written. Yeah. Um, it just depends on who, who writes something decent first. I think. <laughs> That gets chosen first. Yeah, you're on. <laughs> cool. So yeah. if you're working on a solo man, uh, how long would it take for you to kind of in your mind to say, OK, this is it. I'm not changing it anymore. And you're conf committing to it. And, you know, how long does that in your head how long does that take to kind of get in there, stay so in that's, there? <laughs> that's that's a really good question. So for me, when I'm writing solos, I need to feel the song. Yeah. Um, I, I'll, I'll never have a, when I'm writing, I'll never have a sort of preconceived idea of what the song and what the solo will be like. It's just, it, it builds up to it. And then I just, yeah. just noodle. And then I think yeah. from what I noodle it, I just think and, and, and see what I feel sounds right and feels right. Yeah. And then start piecing it together that way. Cool. So it's one of the, the recent songs that, that we've, uh, we've written, but we haven't released yet, Splinters. Yeah. solo for that was was written during lockdown cool um but but it's laid up in about three different or four different sections and each each section was written 
to sort of feed into that. And I must yeah. have written 15 to 20 different sections <laughs> before whittling it down to the, yeah. uh, the, the three bits that's in there now. Yeah. So do you ever feel like once it's out there, you know, it's done, been recorded, mixed, mastered, oh, I wish I did that. <laughs> I wish I didn't do that. Yes, yes, that is that is that is the plague of being yeah. a musician. Yeah, you always want to tweak something, and you always cool. want to uh, to do something slightly different. And it, it's the it's the benefit of of sort of hindsight and listening back and thinking. Yeah, thinking about things in a different way. So when I'm working on a song, or when we're working on a song, the mindset's very different to where it would be in say six to eight months' time. But yeah. I'm just listening back on the bus or, or, or on a playlist or something like that. Yeah. So, do, do, you know, when you have those tweaks in your mind, does that kind of happen when you're performing live? You say, oh, I can change it a little bit now. <laughs> no, I'm very, I'm very good. <laughs> there, are, there are a couple of times where I've tried to sneak little bits in. And then, yeah. Yeah, because we're, we're so rigid about how the structure and stuff like that when yeah. we're rehearsing. Everybody's sort of looking, saying, "Oh, what's he done there?" <laughs> so it doesn't, it doesn't get, um, it doesn't get unnoticed anywhere. Yeah, so it's uh, safe to say that the band writes together in the majority yeah. of everything. Yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah, that's so cool to hear, man. You know, you don't get a lot of bands doing that. Really, you get one or two main dudes does most of the work. And then everybody just kind of fills everything in, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. Yeah. We're just cool to hear old school writing all together. So uh, doing it just, all it just helps to. Um, so I was just going to say for me, it just it just helps to yeah. build a bond with the song with everybody rather yeah. than if it was a finished polished song, then it would feel yeah. for me it would like it would feel like I was doing a cover of somebody else's song. Yeah, cool. When we're doing a collaboration, we can uh, we can put our own stamp on our each on our little bits. Yeah, I see what you mean, man. So when it comes to the lyrics, it, does it always, uh, you know, does the band chip in a few lines here and there, a few words? How does it work? Um, no, not really. Now, now and again, um, Edis will sort of help out in terms of in terms of the the sort of the lyrics. Um, we'll maybe come up with backing, yeah. backing vocals for choruses. Yeah, and that's probably as far as it gets, really. Cool. Cool, man. So do you have like a home kind of studio set up where you track guitars and maybe do overdubs that actually end up on the albums or singles? We've got a, uh, yeah, I've got a, I use a, um, a focus, right? Um, which, which basically I just used it just to track and it's mostly to, to sort of mess about with songs yeah. and work on solos and stuff like that. Um, it's but for me it's nowhere near the right quality for, for recording. But that's just me reaching a limit of my skill set. Yeah. Um it's only something that I've always I've started doing over the last year. Yeah. I've really been forced into it with lockdown and stuff like that. Yeah. Um so I suppose with a bit more a bit more time and practice at it, then it's definitely something that could take forward in the future and, and put that into the to the studio recordings. But yeah. For me it's just more for, for doing demos and cool. And, just playing about really yeah so what is your you know everyday routine like you know being a hard heavy rock band do you have to do you feel like you have to warm up every day like say for two couple of hours every day your fingers are or do, are you a noodler or a shredder everyday shredder <laughs> no def definitely not a shredder i mean i'm a noodler um what, what i'll do from time to time because i work from home a lot yeah. And I might just sort of sit and just pick the guitar up and then just have a little, just have a little plink about, just whilst I'm uh, whilst I'm having downtime from calls, <laughs> like this one. Just in case anybody, just in case anybody from work's watching. Yeah, I do work honestly. <laughs> That's what he says. But whilst waiting for people to attend meetings, I'll just have a little. Uh, yeah, I'll have a little noodle. <laughs> yeah, cool. So while watching YouTube videos or a film grab on <laughs> yeah yeah cool stuff man cool stuff so what are your in, uh, early influences uh like you know and any, are there any new influences as well say from 2015 so, or whatever yeah so when i was growing up i was a, i was a a real goth kid i was listening to things like Marilyn manson um, and yeah. the murder dolls 
um, disturbed, that kind of stuff. Um, but then it was moving into the likes of Iron Maiden, Dire Straits, um, and, and, and dare I say, early Bon Jovi, that kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> there was some really cool stuff on. Uh, oh, yeah, on early definitely, stuff, man. Really old school, yeah. old school, before it became a little bit more mainstream. Um, and then moved into the Fong Skid Row, which was, yeah. which was a life changing experience, uh, and Wasp as well. And more recently, it spans like uh, Five Finger Death Punch, Shine Down, Both of the Valentine Trivium, Event Sevenfold, that kind of yeah. sort of modern, heavy, sort of rock metal type stuff, where it's a bit more technical in terms of the guitars and in yeah. terms of the songwriting, that kind of stuff. Cool, man. Awesome. So, are you a self taught guitarist? Yes and no. So, predominantly, yes. Um, I will, when I first started, it was all just sort of playing about, looking at the basic chords and stuff like that. Um, I have had some some lessons over the years. I probably got two or three lessons or something like that. So I think it probably still counts as self-taught. Yeah. Um, but some lessons just to to sort of help um, help with the solo, really. Yeah. So would you actually? Are you uh, in the middle of any kind of lessons like now? You know, no, no. no. All right. It's been, been, been a while back since I had some lessons. I've thought about getting some new, some more though. Um, All right. Just to just to increase my technical ability because that's one of the things that I'm that I'm not great with is, is the sort of the technical side of stuff. I can Ooh. I can noodle all day long, but in terms of <laughs> structuring it, something a bit more coherent. Yeah, it's uh, something I want to try and do a bit more of. Cool. So, uh, are there any kind of cool tips and tricks you would like to share to you know anyone uh, watching this uh, chat? You know, while you're recording, don't do this or do this, or what you should do before you go in for a, a proper session. What you should do, you know, before a live gig and stuff like that. You know, it's like four questions there <laughs> in your face. Yeah, no, of course. <laughs> so, so for me, recording, it's. Uh don't sit in a room full of people when you're playing just take it find your own space find find your head space find what works for you where you can be natural and you can be calm because as soon as you start thinking about the mistakes you're going to make yeah then you make the mistakes if you're <laughs> sort of chilled out and you're thinking ah, i've got this and all that kind of stuff and you've got nobody there looking at and staring at you when you make the mistakes and you're and getting chewed off because you start to do so sort of 30 takes of the same song. Yeah. Not that that's happened before. Much. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, recording, I find recording very hard. I find it. All right. Because I'm a, I'm a live player, um, re recording, there's nowhere to hide. Yeah. You, you've, got to be, you've got to be spot on. Yeah. It takes a lot of time and effort to get it right. Um. And, and it's a completely different headspace as well. You've got to be yeah. really focused. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not it's not about performing. It's about getting it right. Whereas when you when you're playing live, you can get away with a few mistakes and stuff like that because people are lost in the moment. As long as they're not recording it and uh, <laughs> it's getting played back forever, then then it's a little bit more forgiving playing live. Yeah. Cool, man. Cool stuff. So. Uh... Just a quick touch up on, you know, you guys been signed to uh, the WDFD record label. So what it's what is it like? What is it like for Fallen Mafia? You know, it's really cool because it feels like there's it feels like there's another family out there. Yeah. Who are there to look after us. Um, and it's not just the record company, it's the other bands that's assigned um to wdfd and, and it's the sort of the banter and the sharing knowledge and it, it feels like a real community um keith and the team have done an, an absolute cracking job i think yeah um, and, and, and for me i love it absolutely love it really really good cool that's awesome man so am, am i getting this right do you take care of all the social media you're like the dude that takes care of this all yeah. the social media stuff for the band Predominantly, yeah, yeah. I mean, we do. There is times where the others will post something up and stuff like that. It's yeah. um, it's not all me, but the, the majority of stuff is me kicking about and yeah, and just keeping things plugging away. 
Cool, awesome. You've got to try and keep that uh, that socialness going, haven't you? Yeah, of course, man. So yeah, Spotify and all that cool stuff. So uh, before this is this has been a absolutely awesome chat, man. So before we end this, is there anyone you want to give a shout out to uh, the listeners or the viewers or your fans? I'm gonna put all those questions in one, man. <laughs> all in one. I want, and it's gonna be so broad. I want to just shout out to everybody who's, uh, who's sort of followed us over the years, who's been supportive. Who's um, who's come out and taken a chance on us and bought merch and all that kind of stuff and, and and the huge thanks to anybody who's come out after the pandemic. It's it's been incredibly difficult for us as musicians and as people and as human beings, um, not being able to socialise with with each other, not being able to socialise with the fans, not being able to sort of get out there and perform. And it, it's a, still a bit of a scary world out there even though things are starting to get back to some sort of, you know, normality and stuff like that. But you're seeing venues up and down the country where the gigs happen to be cancelled because there's not enough sales and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, we've been very fortunate in the gigs that we've done so far that we've had really good turnouts. So just want to say, say a massive thank you to everybody who's come out um, for those gigs and, and will continue to come out for the gigs in the future. Cool. Awesome. And so you guys, thanks for staying tuned in. And that was Chris Johnson from Fallen Mafia. Thanks a lot, man. Take care. See you soon. Cheers. Bye.